up guys, Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. This is another CERN watch. I haven't done one of these in a few weeks, but I wanted to throw something together. This one's going to be a little shorter, not a whole bunch of different things tied together, but one main topic. Now CERN is back in business, so to speak. They announced last week that they are starting collisions at 13 tera electron volts and that this is the plan for the next three years to look at the data and see what comes out of it. Now, one interesting thing that they posted on the CERN website on June 4th was a little thing called Seeing the Invisible Event Displays in Particle Physics, and they sort of did an artistic rendering of what the particles are doing, and it's pretty interesting. It is fascinating to look at. So I'll leave links in the description section so you can check that out for yourself. And it goes through a whole history of how they went from just your normal sort of particle collider and collecting data into the digital realm, and how everything is now captured in digital data, which leads me to the topic of today, which is the Helix Nebula. Now, Forbes reported on June 2nd, CERN keeps options open with its clouds. And the idea here, what they're talking about is the collaboration between CERN and companies like Rackspace and OpenStack to back up a lot of the data that's coming out of CERN. And we've talked about the amount of data. It's pretty substantial. And they're trying to figure out a way to create a federated identity or the ability to log in remotely from all over the world into this large database. It says here that the promise of a global network of interoperating OpenStack powered clouds, this federated identity capability is an important step in the right direction. And use cases like CERN's where international teams of scientists may very reasonably wish to regularly process data on CERN's servers, on servers at their own universities and research centers, and even on the public cloud, are a prime example of why inability to access all these resources with a single login matters. So basically what they're talking about is this international cloud. And you've heard of cloud computing and everything like that, so I won't go into detail, but... Here's something that's really interesting. Quote, issues around federation of identity and distribution of workloads clearly matters to CERN, where petabytes of data are routinely generated by large and expensive projects that are of global interest. CERN's ability to add additional computing resources on site is severely constrained by a lack of power and space for larger data centers. Along with other European generators of big science, the European Space Agency and European Molecular Biology Lab, CERN participated for a number of years in a European Commission-funded project called Helix Nebula. And uh, it clarifies that it shouldn't be confused with the NASA cloud project called Nebula, another open source project called Open Nebula, or the failed OpenStack based builder of cloud appliances called Nebula. This is completely different. Helix Nebula was funded by the European Commission. It began as a research project, and the demand was to create larger storage, you know, larger data centers or ways to be able to store and access the data more easily by a larger group of people because of the global implications of these various sectors of science. Now, when you go to the Helix Nebula website, there's a very interesting video that explains what's going on. And I think, you know, we've heard all the speculations and everything surrounding CERN with, you know, is there a connection with DNA? Is there a connection with space? Well, this Helix Nebula program is pretty much the glue by which those different sectors will come together and, you know, create this global network. Now, let me show you this video real quick and you'll understand why I say that. Helix Nebula Marketplace, a step towards federated information as a service. Europe has a wealth of public and private sector IT service providers. By bringing them together, we can create a groundbreaking open platform for innovation. This opportunity is a key driver behind the Helix Nebula initiative. Helix Nebula is a partnership between science and businesses. It has built a cloud infrastructure for science in Europe using a federated approach. Now think about this real quick. Science and businesses coming together and calling it a federation. Okay, now I've speculated and I still need to make the video about consolidating different you know, beast kingdoms and stuff like that. This could be one of those things, but let's continue watching this video. It delivers easy and large scale access to a range of commercial and publicly owned cloud services through the innovative broker technology deployed within Helix Nebula, the Science Cloud Initiative. 
The information as a service model ensures efficient service provision. The supply side has been developing a common front end to its various services so that users can select from a range of federated cloud providers and services and invoke them in a uniform way. Each partner remains fully in control of the implementation of its data policy and the usage of intellectual property rights. These services are formed into the Helix Nebula marketplace so that users can compare, choose and match services together. Now here's the important graphic guys, watch this. Over the last two years, Helix Nebula has broken new ground by testing flagship applications from CERN, the European Molecular Biology Lab, and the European Space Agency. We selected these pilots because they have different set of requirements in terms of cloud resources. CERN is focusing on the Large Hadron Collider physics experiments, where computing capacity needs to keep up with the enormous amount of data generated. EMBL is working on annotating DNA, which requires a lot of run processing to decompose, recompose and analyse the DNA. ESA is a supersite exploitation platform which focuses on volcano eruption and earthquakes by federating data and users. Volcanoes? <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Why would they show volcanoes? In light of all the volcanic activity that's been happening all around the world since CERN fired up about a month ago and, you know, increased its energy and magnetic levels and everything else, I find it interesting that that's what they chose to go with for the European Space Agency was studying volcanoes. You know, so what do they know? They probably have a good idea of how all those three things interconnect and a reason why they're coming together and creating a single cloud system. You know, they're promoting it as kind of like this European Union, innocent sort of business thing. But check out all the companies that are involved in this. And I just made a video about the spiral. You have a couple logos at the very least that have a spiral involved. But the one that really jumped out at me, the logo or the name of the company, is Nephos. And Nephos, interestingly enough, means cloud in Greek. In fact... When you go to the Bible, for example, Mark 13, 26, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. That word clouds, nephales, comes from nephos. That's the name, you know, that's what the word means. So it's fascinating for me to think that there is this technology company that's doing cloud computing and all this stuff that would use that Greek word, the same word that talks about Jesus coming in the clouds. And it just makes me wonder. That as we redefine words, right, the word cloud means, you know, cloud in the sky, but with all this technological advancement, now this idea of a cloud has become something different. We've redefined it. It's this whole ethereal information cluster that sits inside large machines and, and you know, they figure out ways to access it and whatnot, but it's very bizarre. It just makes me think of all the things we've talked about with transhumanism, with artificial intelligence, the image of the beast, and everything that ties into sort of a biblically prophetic outlook. It just seems to me that if some kind of entity does appear, an intelligent entity especially, through this cloud, I mean, I could see certain people suggest that, oh, here we go, you know, the Savior has come in the cloud and this prophecy is fulfilled, especially someone like, you know, some folks that have suggested that Christians should embrace transhumanism, which is just absurd. But anyway, I wanted to point that out to you guys because I found it very strange. And I'll leave all the links in the description section so you guys can do your own digging, your own research, and look for different things. There's a lot of interesting things happening all around the world, and uh, it seems like stuff is going crazy, and it's hard for me to keep up with everything. And, uh, you know, I always get messages and comments and stuff like that. Check this out. Check this show out. Check this movie out. It's just everywhere. And even this morning when I dropped off my daughter at school, I saw a movie poster that uh, just a quick search on the Internet. I couldn't find it, but I believe it was Jeff Goldblum holding a portal. And uh, if I can snap a picture of it or find the image, I'll do a report on that again later. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys got something out of it. Again, all the links to everything I talked about and more are in the description section of this video. So go there and check it out. Hope you have a great day, guys. God bless.